Welcome to the British Chamber of Commerce Singapore's podcast channel. We're excited to bring you season three of new episodes featuring in-depth content across Singapore, ASEAN and the United Kingdom. We've had some extraordinary guests on our channel, including Formula One's Claire Williams. I'm a firm believer that any great team, any successful team has a great culture flowing through it. You aren't successful if you don't. So we put a lot of work into this. Renowned mountaineer Kenton Cool. That 2019 there with a client, a big storm came in and literally destroyed Camp 2. And I've got some video footage of Sherpas like trying to hold on to the tent fabric as it blows away. And the Royal Navy's Commodore Steve Morehouse, commander of the UK Carrier Strike Group. The squadron of F-35 aircraft we have on board is a Royal Air Force squadron. And, and the personnel there are drawn from both the Navy and the Air Force. So you know, what better way of, of showing just the efficiency and the joined up nature that we now have. And distinguished Sky News anchor, Jeremy Thompson. We had two little vans with satellite links and we, le we leapfrogged up the road to Pristina, the capital, uh, throughout that first day with non-stop coverage from basically inside a war zone. We also sit down with the likes of TikTok, Twitch and Twitter and continue to bring you conversations around business and trade, leadership and people, sustainability, sports and arts and much, much more. Thank you, as always, for your support and we hope you enjoy this podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this British Chamber of Commerce podcast and a, a very good morning to you wherever you are tuning in from. My name is Anil Scott. I'm a partner with Select Investors Singapore. And, and during this podcast, I'll be taking an inside look at what a successful expatriate life in Singapore looks like. Now, that is, uh, of course, a wide ranging and open ended topic subject of course to to interpretation and, and nuance however my guest this morning will be talking with me in some detail about the unique often fascinating and undoubtedly fulfilling aspects of a very purpose-driven professional life one that many of us could only hope to lead i've personally known our guest speaker through our mutual professional association with the establishment he heads in singapore for well over a decade now and in that short space of time, his vision and professionalism have in no small part contributed to the precocious success of the international school that he founded here. I'm delighted to be joined on this morning's Britcham podcast by the founding headmaster of Dulwich College, Singapore, Mr. Nick Magnus. Nick, good morning and welcome. Good morning, Anil, and, and thank you for your kind words. Nick, um, it's... It really is great uh, to, to be to be sitting down with you again. You've been uh, established here in Singapore for some time now. You're, you're the founding headmaster of, of Dulwich College Singapore. Now, undoubtedly one of the, the leading international schools here, you're a, a professionally settled long-term expatriate, well known in the international community here. Many people, come to Singapore or are sent to Singapore to set up businesses uh, and offices for, for their companies and organizations, often in a, in a, in a commercial capacity, but, 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 but others as well. You've achieved this, in my view, spectacularly well in the, in the past 10 years or so. Um, you, you've set up a school for, from scratch. Looking back over that time, and it's a period of, uh, over which you and I have met and spoken on, on a number of occasions. What would you say, Nick, are the three proudest um, personal or, or professional uh, achievements of your time here so far? I think that, um, well, first of all, I am the, as the founding head, it's important to note that it's, it's not about me. It's about the team that I'm fortunate enough to lead. Uh, and it's that team effort which has really been part of the success. I think one thing that I'm very proud of is that I think that you you have to have a very clear vision for any sort of startup, any, any, any startup. And I think that we had a very clear vision from the start about the sort of school that we would be, um, um, the sort of school that we wanted to create. And I think that often when it comes to startups, um, there's a temptation to try and be all things to all people. And I mm -hmm. think that's a really, that's a, that's a big mistake. I think if you try and be all things to all people, you end up being pretty average at everything. And in, in Singapore with, with our parents and, and, and with the clientele here, 
they're not going to accept average. You know, the, the word average doesn't exist in the Singapore vocabulary. So I think we were very clear about the vision. Uh, and I think although we are, we are far from perfect and we've made many, many mistakes, we have pretty much delivered on the promises that we made. It was a big ask. We, you know, we, 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 mm. We, we sold a, a greenfield site um, uh, and the promise of what the school would be. Uh, and that was a it was a huge leap of faith on behalf of the parents. But I think that on the whole, we have delivered on those promises. So I'm, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of the fact I'm very proud of my students and of my teachers. Um, I'm proud of the partnerships that we have established with our parents. Um, but I'm also very proud of the fact that we've that we're forward thinking, that we're innovative and we haven't rested on our laurels. We haven't said, you know, job done, um, congratulations, aren't we wonderful? We're always looking to improve. We're always looking to innovate. We're always looking to be creative. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm proud of that as well. And, and that last part about forward thinking, looking to improve, can I take it that involves the, the, the making mistakes or, or, or perhaps the courage to make, make, make mistakes as, as, as well? Yeah, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with making mistakes. Again, I think it's... Uh, it's 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 not correct that leadership is seen as being perfect. Um, you know, if yeah. you don't make mistakes, I would argue that you're actually not trying hard enough. And I think it's important that we encourage people to 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 be creative, um, to to try and think outside of the box. And that will, of course, involve making lots of mistakes. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that you can get away with it once or twice. Um, if you keep making the same mistakes, then there's an issue there and that's not gonna be sustainable. And I think it's important that we encourage in our young people that it's okay to make mistakes, that you learn from making mistakes. I just, I just wanna unpack this, um, what, what you said earlier about, about delivering on promises made. Now we, we talked about this earlier, but about consistency and, and about the fact that 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 you and, and and the school you lead has stuck to your guns and and you haven't div divulged and you well you haven't you, you haven't diverged sorry um from from what you you set out to do it seems to me that that is is a crucial ingredient in, ingredient in, in in success if you look at people who are successful if you look at organizations that deliver one of the things that that one of the, the the few things that stand out is sticking to what you set out to do, sticking sticking to to, to the to the, the the promises made or or the strategy put down. A lot of people flip flop. A lot of organisations change course. A lot of um, a, a lot of uh, uh, there there are lots of pressures that would um, that would would make it um, easy sometimes even advisable dare i say it, to 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 change tack what are what are the things that have kept you going on on on, on that on that path of continuity and, and not not changing obviously i think one of those must be the, the the heritage of of the organization as well but there must be other things that you personally bring bring to it to, to keep this on course i think you it's it's about establishing trust you've got to be brave you've got to have that sort of that confidence and that self belief and there will be times when when you when that self belief will be called into question, and then you need a strong team of people around you who share that vision, who share that belief. You know they're they're, they're responsible for sometimes sort of picking you up and dusting you off when you when you have that that moment of self doubt. So that's so good, been, good people. So yeah, good good people around you who, who who share the vision. And I think I've been very fortunate in the team that I've managed to work with over the last ten years here. Um, so, so it's and as I say, it's a, it's about establishing trust. And you know, if you if you establish trust, people will allow you to make mistakes. They'll allow you to get it wrong, on occasion, not too often. Yeah. Um, but if you have that trust, then you really can um, you know achieve great things together. Super. Now, I, I'm just curious, Nick. But before you came here, what were your preconceptions of of, of what life life in Singapore? Would, would be like and especially given that, that you know you're, you're not new to 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 an overseas posting you, you've uh, you've been in china and, and and east africa um did you think singapore was going to be an easy run were you were you a bit more sanguine about, about your your singapore venture yeah i mean i've i've been a, an expat now for 23 years so my wife and i went overseas in 1998 we were in london and we were a, a bit sort of we were in our late 20s and a bit sort of 
a bit fed up and we needed a bit of a change. So we decided to, to have an adventure um, and we decided to go and, and teach overseas. We weren't interested in promotion or, or careers or money. It was very much about this sort of this lifestyle change, this lifestyle adventure. So we headed off to, to Nairobi for two years uh, right. and we stayed well, we stayed for eight and a half and it just happened that you know promotions came our way opportunities came our way so we were there for eight and a half years and had the most wonderful time it's hard to wipe the dust of africa off your boots um uh and it was it was but you know your priorities changed so during that yep. time we became parents and then mm -hmm. we started thinking about well we'll, we'll we'll need financial security we'll need physical security and then really, I mean, it was it was it came from nowhere. I saw an advert um, for, for Dulwich College in Shanghai. Um, this was back in 2005. And yeah. before I knew it, I was on a plane traveling to London for interview and um, we were heading to China. And of course, China at that time, uh, an incredibly exciting place to be. Mm. China was exploding with foreign investment being uh, welcomed in with open arms and you know, we were there in China for five and a half years at a time where we saw tremendous growth uh, and again, mm. tremendous opportunity. And it was really, really exciting to be a, a very small part of, of that success story. And again, we met some we met some fabulous people, met some met, had some wonderful opportunities to build. I, mean, I was the founding head of that school. So to build a school. Yep. from school. And then, you know, Singapore came along. And we, of course, we'd been on to Singapore on holiday on a number of occasions. Yeah. And it just it just ticked all the right boxes for us. It was great opportunities for our for our children in terms of sports and extracurricular mm. activities, in terms of lifestyle for all of us. And it really was. It, it's got that that excitement of Asia, but it also has that sort of Western influence, too. So for us, it really was the best of both worlds. You know, we could have um, we could have the excitement of living in Asia, but we could also buy Branston pickle and Marmite. So <laughs> so Singapore. Um, here we come. Very good, and, and, and it's it's a rich it's a rich international experience, isn't it? If, if if you look at yours, how would you how would you say that has um, contributed and developed you as a, as, a, as a professional? I mean, when when you sit it, 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 um, and 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 look at your industry. Which is a global industry, but it's also, if you look at the British education system, it's also a very, a very parochial one as, as well. Do you think this 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 experience has given you some 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 real strengths and, and, and real advantages for, from a professional yeah. perspective? Yeah, I think. Is, I, is there an expat edge? Is, is is what I'm what I'm getting at? I think it's I think it's more about sort of maturity and and as you get older, hopefully you get wiser. I think mm. when I was when I was my first headship was in Kenya. I was I was very much um, you know a British head teacher running a British school for an international community, and I realised through through that Kenya journey and China and here in Singapore that even though I'm British and I'm very proud to be British and mm. there's such strong influence there, you know I'm I've 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 matured and grown into a, an international citizen if you like, uh, and I'm I've. You know, I've lived overseas for 23 years. I've got friends from all over the world. I've met the most fascinating, incredible people from 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 all the continents. Um, and it's it's just it's 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 made me, I think, a, 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 an older and wiser and a, a more a more rounded and more fulfilled person as a result. So I'm, I'm a, a great advocate of of the global that global citizenship that um that an international education and an international lifestyle offers you you know it's not about being a british person in singapore it's about being part of an international global community mm -hmm. now in the early days of your your posting here you and sonia and, and the family would undoubtedly have faced a, a number of challenges some big some not so big some some will all be familiar with others perhaps not um, I'm interested to know, for for our listeners who may be newer to, to, to Singapore, how exactly you and, and your family squared up to these 
Were there any real curveballs or surprises along the way? You, you must now, Nick, have some have a few takeaways from that from that formative time, um, and not just in Singapore, in 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 Kenya and and, and China as well. What, what what would or or wouldn't you do if you did it did it all over again? Well. I mean, we're, we're seasoned expats now, and I, I'm, I'm not one for looking back and if only we'd done this. I think that, you know, I believe in fate. I think I believe that things happen for a reason. And I think that when 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 adversity comes along, it, it's it, it can be the making or the breaking of you and you've, you've got to respond to it. Um, so I think that f for me, as I say, as a seasoned expat, we're, we're very comfortable with the lifestyle that we've chosen. Uh, and we've reconciled ourselves with the fact that we are long-term expats. You know, we're not here for the short haul. We're not here for two years and then going back to the UK. Yeah. Um, but of course, that brings challenges with it. So, and that's been really highlighted by the pandemic. Um, I, my, my, my parents and Sonia's parents are elderly. They're in the, the, the latter part of, 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 of what's been a, been a wonderful life. Yes. Um, but we're, I'm, I'm, I'm a, we're a long way from home. Now, that was always yeah. OK before. And, and you know, listeners m m might identify with this, that dreaded phone call that you get mm. at three o'clock in the morning and the phone goes and you look at your phone and it's a plus four, four number. And yes. you think to yourself, well, it, it's family. And my family know that it's three o'clock in the morning in Singapore. Um, yeah they're ringing me it's not going to be good news yeah um, and you answer that phone and you deal with it now you know in yeah. the past when you know my father had a, a took a turn for the worst health wise uh, three hours after that phone call I was literally on a plane flying back to, to the UK to give my parents the support they needed and, and I reconciled myself that I can do that and that's okay but of yeah. course for two years we, we couldn't travel we couldn't travel and I couldn't leave Singapore and I couldn't run the risk of not being able to get back in. I had to support my people here. Uh, and that was really, really challenging. So again, through difficult family times, when I really yeah. needed to be with my family, I, I couldn't do that. And my, my poor brother, I've got a brother and a sister. My sister lives in Melbourne, Australia, so she wasn't any use either. And my yeah. brother lives in Wiltshire. So that burden fell on his shoulders. So I think that just that, the fact that the world, which had become such a small place, because of the pandemic suddenly became a much bigger place that 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 was really challenging and it was it's the only real challenge that i've faced as an expat in the last 10 years and, and we'll talk about that uh, in, in a minute and, and thank you for sharing that, that that part about your your parents because i think that's that's something that that many of us um who are of a certain age with with, with elderly parents um go, go through it it's 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 it's, it's it's great um, because I can relate to that, and I'm sure many people listening uh, can, can too. I, I, I'm fascinated, um, Nick, by, by something I call the allure of, of, of Singapore. I, I see a number of, of former international school kids who have been brought up uh, here and, 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 and grew up here. My, my, my wife is, is one of them, and they come back. As, as young professionals, they, they, they come back in significant numbers, I, I've noticed. Singapore obviously has a, has a pull for them. It's very different, uh, I think, to, to when you and I were leaving school, when the world perhaps may have been a, a less accessible place and, and seemed a lot, a, a, a lot smaller, maybe even more bewildering. You, your parents, like many established expatriates here, you, you, you have teenage children uh, who have largely grown up in this wonderful environment. How exactly do you think their outlook now might be different to how ours was at a, at a similar stage? Because it is different, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So my children are proudly British and have their British passport, but they've never lived in the UK. Um, mm. And my daughter was born in Nairobi. My son was born in Shanghai. Um, they're global citizens, global citizens. And I, I have many conversations with parents who sometimes they're anxious, they worry that, you know, in, in, in pursuing their, their, their dream, in pursuing, <clears throat> excuse me, their, their, their ambitions professionally, it's brought their family to, to Singapore or it's brought their family to China. And I think sometimes parents worry that they are possibly shortchanging their children, that they are denying them the opportunities to grow up in their home country, um, you know, with the grandparents down the road and the cousins, et cetera. And I say, no, not at all. You, you, you are actually giving 
your children a wonderful gift, the gift of an international education. And it will, it will take many years for, for how important that is to be realized. And I often say to parents, you know, you will be bouncing your grandchildren up and down on your knee before you appreciate um, the gift of an international education. The fact that it just creates young people who are more open-minded, um, who don't see a, a world with borders and, and, and restrictions. Um, they look beyond um, they look beyond those borders uh, and they see a, a whole world of opportunity. They're not restricted to one country as we possibly were when we were growing up. Our world was, you know, the United Kingdom, um, whereas our children today see, see a whole world of possibilities. And, you know, it will it will make them it will make them it produces young people who are completely comfortable in with, with who they are and what they are and where they're from. And there will be challenges along the way. There's lots of research on third culture kids and the pros and cons for that. But I genuinely believe with 23 years under my belt that it, 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 it produces wonderful young people who who will make a real difference to the world. So your advice um, to parents who may be worried about this or who may be anxious about this is to 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 to, to ride with it, to 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 to, to see the positives, the the, the in, inherent richness of of, of this international uh, experience, this this world without borders and 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 none of the definitive looking 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 through a lens that has none of the definitive points of difference that maybe you and I were used to when when, when we were growing up but, but back in the UK I think that's that's wonderful um very powerful and it segues very nicely into my next question Nick about the world and and, and your the, the institution that you lead uh, and the the industry that you're in and it, its place in, in in this world because we're, we're living in in a very a very complex place now as as we speak uh, assumptions that we once took for granted are, are no longer hold and it seems to me that that you uh, as as a teacher as a, as a head teacher and, and uh, as a leader are in a a fairly unique position in, in this regard you're in a position where you have to set and, and manage the expectations of your own constituents, be they parents or working professionals in Singapore in their own right, students, staff and teachers, uh, most of whom are living away from their countries of origin, albeit in, in one of the most uh, safest parts of the globe. Many, many people would say, and I've heard it, heard it said uh, to, to me before, certainly, that educators who have to be at the forefront of, of new ideas can positively contribute to, to this debate the the pedagogical edge so to speak would it be fair to say that 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 you and and your institution and your industry may be able to do this a little bit better than than, than most of us and 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 i'd go even further and, and ask you would would you and and your school be able to do this better by dint of the fact that you're situated here in Singapore. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I think that education is the the world of education is is not always a good example to use when it comes to being creative and innovative because I think that when it comes to education, it is by its nature it's it's quite traditional. It's quite conservative, <laughs> small c, and it's quite resistant to change. Um, when, when you have so many stakeholders in all of the students and the parents and the, and the teachers, um, if you're going to put change into place, you've got to really think very carefully about that and go through a whole change process. And that can very much slow down the pace of change. I think that the pandemic has, has changed our views on that. I think, you know, the expression um, necessity is the mother of, of, of all invention. Uh, we've had to change uh, and sometimes change overnight. And I, and I think it's given us a confidence. It's given us a confidence that we can do that. I think other industries, uh, listeners will be, that, that are in those industries are, are in a stronger position when it comes to change. But I think the pandemic, there have to be some, some, some pluses, some pros to, to you know, all of the challenges that we've had over the last two years. And I think that it's given educators 
more of a confidence that they can embrace change um, as long as they go through a carefully managed change process. And to, to, to that point, you are embracing, well, you're, you're, you're preparing, uh, it's a cliche, but, but, but it's a truism as well. You're preparing leaders for the future. The, the, the young people today that are in, in your care, that, that, that you and, and uh, other institutions like yours are, are helping to prepare for, for, for life, are going to be leaders, they're going to be influencers. And um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that that gives you a, a, um, a, a fairly unique um, uh, perspective, a unique pro professional perspective on, on the power of what, of what you're doing and, 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 yeah. and how that, that can contribute to, 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 the, to that, that world that we're going to live in tomorrow compared to um, some of us that, that, that be, be maybe engaged in, 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 in a little bit more every, everyday um, priorities in, 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 in our professional lives. I, I, that, that's essentially what, where, where, I'm, where I'm, what yeah. I'm trying to, trying to get at. Yeah, I think, I think that, you know, as parents, we want the best for our children. We want our pair, we want our children to, to be to be successful. We want them to be happy. We want them to be kind. Um, and I think that the world is because it is a world market now, it's not a it's not an insular country market, it's a world market now. That it's the world of education is well, the world is far more competitive than it's ever been. And getting good exam results and going to a good university. Is, is no longer enough to differentiate your child from the rest, from the pack. How mm. is your child going to stand out? And that's when I come back to that whole global citizenship thing, because I think this is absolutely key to creating individuals who stand out, who see the world through a slightly different lens. And when I talk about global citizenship, I think it's about young people who understand and embrace and are excited about things like diversity equity and inclusion about mm. well-being about fairness about sustainability about intercultural understanding now i'm not saying that you wouldn't get that in your home country but i think the fact that that our children are they're they're, they're completely they're completely sort of embraced by by the fact that they are global citizens i think that gives them an advantage i think it gives them a confidence that when they're in a crowded room surrounded by uh, you know 10 other 25 year old graduates that will give them an edge that will make them stand out that will that they will be the leaders in that room they'll have that confidence you see it yourselves our children as expatriate children they have a tremendous confidence they can you can put them in a room with complete strangers and in within a few minutes they're all talking to each other um, yeah. They're used to being in that environment with all sorts of different people from all different backgrounds and walks of life, and they're comfortable interacting. And of course, success in life is all about communication. It's all about interaction with others, and, and, and self-assurance as well, which is which is 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 is, is central to, to to what what you do in in, in international schooling. I, I want to. Quiet Sorry, go on. Yeah, there's a quiet confidence that, again, you have to nurture it. We want our young people to be gracious. We want our young people to be humble. Yeah. We also want them to have that quiet, steely confidence, which will be a fabulous life skill for them to take through life. An, an asset. I, I want to turn briefly back to, to, to the, the, the concept of, of success. And... I, I think it was 2012 that you and I sat down in in um, in um, Starbucks in in Change Alley uh, off off Raffles Place, and and so much water has has gone under the bridge since then. Even even Change Alley and that Starbucks look completely different if if you if you go there today. Um, back then, Dulwich College, Singapore, wasn't even 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 a, a, a building site. I, I think the ground had probably just just been broken. Um, today it's a thriving school. Um, there are um, um, thousands of, 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 of students uh, who, who attend um, the, the, the school that you lead. There must have been a lot of, lot of pressure along the way, a lot of expectations on your shoulders by, by, from a number of, of, of different areas, from, from the organisation that, that you work for, from, from, um, from 
peers um, from yourself, I'm sure, as 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 um, as someone that, that had, had had set very definable goals. You've built this school from scratch. You've built it into a successful organisation. You also, like the rest of us, over the over the last couple of years, have been through the COVID nineteen pandemic, and this is interesting because. You had an organization, the very premise of which uh, infers that face to face contact and, and humor interaction are, are essential to, to what you do. I'm curious how you came out of that, that experience, the, 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 the COVID experience, personally and professionally. And, and I, I'm interested in what advice you, you'd have to offer based on your personal journey through the last two years. Yeah, I think that. Um... I think I think it's it's challenged us to to, to think differently. To, to to it's it forced us out of our comfort zone, and I think that we've looked at the ways that, that we do things. And sometimes we have to ask ourselves why do we why do we do things this way? And often the response is, well, we do things this way because it's the, the way that we've always done them. And you know, yep. an example would be sort of you know, uh, working from home. Now, if you'd said to me, um, uh, you know, three three years ago, that not not the teaching staff, but but that your your admin staff, that your finance teams, you know, your marketeers, your your HR, they can work remotely. I would have said absolute rubbish. That's impossible. How can how can people work remotely? But you can. We've been forced to do it by the pandemic, and we've proved that. Um, that we can be more flexible, that we can be nimble, that we can adapt to situations. We can we can have hybrid systems and processes in place where we we do think a little bit differently. And I think that we have become much smarter as a result of that. So I think that's a that's a, that's been an advantage. The, the, the use of technology uh, uh, to, to to support. Um, um, support you in the workplace to support those relationships but the key here is that the technology is not a replacement for those relationships and i think that again two years down the line we've we've realized the importance of that that of that human interaction and i don't think any algorithm or any artificial intelligence is ever going to be able to replace that connectivity that one human being has with the other and it's made us appreciate that more it's made us appreciate the simple things in life being able to walk into a theater and, and, and watch a, 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 a play or a concert to be mm. able to walk down the road and not have to wear a mask it's made us appreciate how fortunate we were beforehand it's made us smarter and i think it's made us understand and appreciate the importance of relationships more did it also teach you, because you are, um, by dint of the fact of, of what you are, and I'm talking about the, the organisation here here rather than, than you, you personally, you, you are in a privileged position. You, you are um, a, if, we, if you look at the, 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 the global community of, 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 um, of school students, if you, if you look at um, the, 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 the Educational picture in any given country, an international school is uh, represents a fairly, a fairly lucky, a fairly privileged portion of, of, of the population. Absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. Did the did the the, the pandemic um, give you a, a, an opportunity to view um, life through a slightly different lens, or or did you have that 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 view already? And and was there a, a sense uh, of of it, it, it's important to 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 give back in in, in different aspects mm -hmm. when you see the probably um, unequal effects of, of of something like 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 a, a health health emergency on on the wider population. Did, did that focus thoughts? I think I think that the subject of privilege is is a really really important one in a, in an international school in a in a private school where. You know, parents are paying a lot of money, and our children are absolutely blessed. They are so 
lucky in all of the opportunities that they that they have. Um, and so they are in a privileged position. And as you say, it, it, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no shame in being mm. privileged. But with privilege comes responsibility. Responsibility to make the most of the opportunities that you have every day, but also the responsibility to pay that good fortune forward. Now, I don't think that the, 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 that the pandemic has changed our attitude towards that. We all realized that we had that responsibility going into the pandemic. It may have slightly focused us a little clearer, um, but it's, it's, it's really important that our young people, as I say, when they go out into that big bad world, have an, a true understanding of how privileged they are and the responsibility that it brings with it. Wonderful. That, thank you, Nick. Now, we're, we're nearing the, the end of this podcast, the latter stages of, of this, this, this podcast. It's, it's been, it's been uh, as, as I knew it would, it's, it's, it's been an engaging and, 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 um, and, and, and very interesting conversation. Can you tell me a little bit about the book you're reading at the moment, Nick? I've always got about three or four books on the go. So I'm, I'm, a, go. I'm, a, lover, I'm a lover of I'm a lover of history. So I've right. always I've always got historical nonfiction on the go. Um, yeah. At the moment, with the sort of the 80th anniversary of the fall of Singapore, I've been reading a number of books about the fall of Singapore and uh, looking for some some different angles there. But I'm mm. also I, I also in terms of fiction, I I, I love uh, William Boyd is my favourite author. Uh, right. I love William Boyd, Graham Greene, um, Somerset Old, Moore. Old Alanian. Uh, yeah, yeah. Julian. No, Julian. Sorry, Graham Swift. I'm thinking of no, no, Graham no. Swift. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Julian. Julian Barnes. And but there's also that there's if you think about the writing of those authors, there's a there's a there's an international side to that as well. It's 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 quite um, quite cosmopolitan. Mm. Their their, their mm. subject matter and um, anyway. It's that's that's what I I tend to I I'm I'm a, I'm a I, I during term time it's very difficult to find time to read um, yeah. during holidays um, then yeah I'm, I'm I'm stuck to a book or stuck to several yeah. books very good very good that that's a that's a habit I share with you having 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 about three or four or, on on the go so I, I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm glad glad to hear that now um, just before we end a little little bit of fun. Um, on a on a sultry tropical evening in in, in Singapore or, or on your veranda, cold beer or red wine? Uh, I would start with a cold beer, <laughs> then swiftly move on to a glass of Pinot Noir or, or black currant juice, as, as some of my friends refer to it. Very good. And and uh, and at the weekend, football or cricket? Well, I love all sport. I love all sport that involves a ball. If it hasn't got a ball involved, then I'm not too keen. But um, right. I, I, I love both. But cricket has always been my my great love, my great passion. I'm I'm, I'm too old to play now, unfortunately. But um, but as with all armchair uh, athletes, I talk a great game um, when watching it on the TV and offering my views and opinions on it. But uh, so yeah, that's so cricket, football, love love both, love rugby. I still play a bit of golf, but um, yep. if I had, if I could only have one, it would certainly be cricket without any question of a doubt. There's there's a strong metaphor between sport and uh, success and, and organisational success, isn't there? How how important is sport for you um, in terms of in terms of what you do and the, and the values that you, you impart in your role? I think sport has so many important life lessons, transferable skills that it can offer. I think that you know you, you have to communicate, you have to cooperate, you have to collaborate, you have to work as one. It's not about an individual; it's about the team effort. I think it's it provides wonderful opportunities for young people to develop and hone their 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 leadership skills. My first ever leadership position was captain of the school cricket team at primary school when I was eleven years old, uh, and I haven't looked back since, really. I've always, liked, I've always liked the sound of my own voice. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, lastly, um, Nick, who would you like to see as the new James Bond? Well, I must be honest with you. I, I, I'm a big fan of Daniel Craig. I thought it was. I, yeah. I thought he was a, fab, a fabulous James Bond. And yeah. um, no spoilers, but I must admit, I, I did allow myself a little bit of a cry at the end of the last one. I, right. I found it terribly sad. It was like the end of an era. And I've seen it yet. Uh, so I'll say no more. 
But I know there's been lots of talk about this individual, but I, I really do think that Idris Elba would make a fantastic yeah. James Bond. For yeah. me, a, a James Bond has got to be has got to be British. Um, they've got to they've got to be sort of a bit anti-establishment. They've got to have a bit of an edge to them. Mm -hmm. um, um, but there's there's something a bit classy about them too, and I think that yes. uh, I think Idris Elba would would fit that bill perfectly. I, I, I think my wife would agree with you uh, 100 percent as uh, as well. No, I I, I like that choice. I, I, I like a, a bond for uh, a bond for the for the for the decades uh, uh, ahead. I, I, I think, Nick, it has been wonderful as ever to uh, to chat with you th this morning. Uh, thank you very much for for your time and, and for this engaging podcast ladies and gentlemen that that brings us to the end of this morning's Britcham podcast it simply remains uh for me to thank all of those who have made this podcast possible mr nick magnus founding head of dulwich college singapore select investors singapore and in particular the global engagement team at select investors and of course the team here at the british chamber of commerce in singapore without which none of this would be possible wherever you are i wish you a safe productive and enjoyable day and thank you once again for listening thank you for tuning into this episode of the british chambers podcast before you go don't forget to subscribe and why not leave us a rating and review on spotify apple google and the other podcast platforms for more information, please visit our website at www.britcham.org.sg and tune in next time for a brand new episode.